morning. Good morning. Welcome to all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's good to be back here with you in God's house uh, this morning. Thank you to Pastor Beckwith for giving me a Sunday off. We had a lovely weekend at the beach and came back to snow. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. No, we don't. Um, but it is good to have all of you here with us today. We'd especially like to welcome our visitors who are here with us today. It's an honor that you're worshiping with us, and I pray that you would come and be back with us again very soon. Our worship service today is Divine Service Setting 1. It begins this morning on the, in the front of your hymnal on page 151. We will begin that immediately after our opening hymn, number 341.
have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause for a moment of silent confession before our God. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that you may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. And for his sake, he does forgive you of all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together today the words of the intro that you can find printed on the insert in your bulletin. let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
the collect for the day found printed on that same insert in your bulletin. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the receiving of God's holy word. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Advent is from Malachi chapter 4. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all the evildoers will be, will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. We shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. And you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and the just decrees that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 15. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Jesus Christ. And together you may have with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promise given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing your name. And again it says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all peoples extol him. And again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles, in him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. This is the word of the Lord. Be God. We rise to honor our God in the hearing of this gospel. St. Luke, the 21st chapter. Jesus said, There will be signs in sun and moon and stars, and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the seas and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, 
lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth, but stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated as we sing our sermon hymn. lesson. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all the evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming will set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you, who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings, and you shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. These are the words of our Lord and God that we will meditate upon this morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I've told you this before, but it bears repeating so that we remember that Advent is not about a baby and me. That's Christmas. Advent, the season that we are in now, is a time of preparation for the coming of the Lord. Now I will admit that today we most commonly use Advent as a preparation for Christmas, 
for us to rightly remember why Jesus came and to get ready to celebrate that amazing gift of salvation that began some 2,000 years ago with his incarnation. But our Savior has come. He has already been here. He has already completed his work of salvation for us. How did he do that? He died for our sins on the cross. He rose again to give us eternal life. And he has now ascended into his place at the right hand of the Father where he is preparing a place for you and for me who remain in faith until the end to live with him in paradise for all of eternity. After he ascended, he sent to us his Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit who gives to us the means of grace, of word, and sacrament whereby we come to faith in Jesus Christ our Savior. And Jesus has given us his church. This place where we come to receive his gifts of grace. He came. He ascended. He is coming again. We live, therefore, now in this time of the final waiting. Yes, Advent for us is a reality of a time of preparation. Preparation for the coming of the Lord. His final coming. And that's what our text is about today. It was two verses. The first verse is a very dire warning. It says, on that great and awesome day, it'll be time of reckoning. The time of reckoning for all of those who have rejected the gift of salvation in Jesus Christ. And God, through his prophet Malachi, calls such people arrogant and evildoers. They are arrogant because they believe they do not need Jesus. But he is a myth. That they don't need him in their lives. He can be ignored. And he can be replaced by their own interpretation of life. That makes them arrogant because they think they know better than God. And they are evildoers because they reject Christ. And they become a law unto themselves. They are left with nothing but the natural born sin that is within them, that is left unchecked without the indwelling of Christ that comes from faith. And scripture is very clear that anything that is done outside of faith is sin. Now they have had every opportunity to hear the message of faith, to receive the means of grace. But in their arrogance, they have rejected them all. The gift of salvation and life is theirs. Because Jesus Christ dying on the cross paid for the sins of the whole world, but they refuse it. And not receiving that gift then all that is left for them is the judgment with which they were born. Jesus himself said that on the day of his final return, that there is no time left. There is no rapture. There is no seven years to figure it out. Scripture is very clear that Jesus will come instantly in the twinkling of an eye. And at that very moment will be the separation of the sheep and the goats, the believers and the unbelievers. And to those unbelievers on his left, he will say, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. And Malachi wrote that for those who reject Christ, it will be a day of judgment that will set them ablaze. How awful. How unnecessary. I pray that for you and for your loved ones, this will not be their end. 
There is still time. Though that time may be very, very short indeed. Now Jesus told us in the gospel today that there are going to be signs. There will be signs and warnings that we should heed. He says as the day of his coming approaches nearer and nearer, it says people will be fainting with fear and foreboding for what is coming upon the world. But you know, you read elsewhere in Scripture where it says that while people are saying peace and security, then suddenly it will come upon them like labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. So which is it? Are we going to have signs? Are we going to be terrified and living in foreboding? Or are we just going to think, hey, everything's great, and then boom, it's over. It can't be both. I can Think about it. I believe it's the people of faith, you and me, who will be having that foreboding about what is coming in the judgment of Christ. Not, not for us. We're good. We'll have a foreboding for this world and for the things that it will be going through. Is our world not going through some things? And we'll have a worse foreboding for those unbelievers that we know who are all around us who will suffer the judgment of Christ. But I believe it's those unbelievers, those ones who faithlessly have rejected God and have gone on with their lives on their own, and everything's great. I've got 10 million followers on TikTok. Life is wonderful. No, it's not. That's false. Hey, the economy's doing great, everything's wonderful. Ah, don't base your life on that. See, we who believe we're going to have that foreboding because we know what's coming. Especially on the unbelievers. Because the unbelievers are going to be caught unaware of thinking everything's just fine. And they're not going to escape. They're not going to escape the sudden judgment and destruction that will come when Jesus returns. That's verse 1. Verse 2, that's for us. Verse 2 says, but for you, you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness will shine, will rise with healing in its wings, and you shall go out leaping like a calf from the stall. That's one is for us. For we believers who eagerly look forward to Christ's return, Jesus, the Son of Righteousness, He will arise on that great and last awesome day. He will come with the shout of the angels, with all the glory, with all of the faithful who have gone before us, and we will meet Him in the air. What a glorious day that will be. And He brings healing, Malachi says. What healing is he going to bring us on that last day? Well, first and foremost, all of those who oppose him and oppose us who follow him, they will be gone. Gone forever. Never to harass us, never to hurt us again. And there will be no more pain, no more suffering, no more death. I think most wonderfully there will be no more sin. Think about that. No more sin. We and all who have believed who have died before us will live with Him in His perfect new creation never to be corrupted by sin again. Even as we have foreboding now, because we don't want to go through those hard times that Jesus says are coming. Even though we have foreboding about the damnation that will come upon those who have rejected him, when Jesus does come, for we who have feared his name and followed him in faith 
He will bring our final salvation and we will leap like calves from the stall. Free. Finally. Forever. From the oppressing corral of this sin-cursed world. So we have Advent. This time of preparation for the Lord's coming. He has come. He has come as the babe of Bethlehem. He has come as the man on the cross. He has come as the risen Savior victorious. And he comes. He comes now to you here in his church. He speaks through his word of scripture. He comes to you in the very real presence of his body and blood in the Holy Supper. He comes as he forgives you your sins. And he is coming again when he will judge the living and the dead. Now for we who believe, we have no fear of that day. We who fear the name of the Lord have no fear of that day. The final coming of the Lord is one for us to look forward to, to rejoice in, to say, Amen, come, Lord Jesus. And what does Jesus tell us to do as we wait? As we see that day getting closer and closer, he says, straighten up. That doesn't mean get your act together. It means straighten up. Raise your heads because your salvation is drawing me. I would encourage you as you straighten up and as you look, as you raise your heads to look for the coming of Christ, I would also encourage you to look around. Look around at the believers around you who are being overwhelmed by foreboding. And you bring them Christ. Bring them the hope of Christ that will see them through their foreboding. Look around to the Christians around you when you need help, when you are becoming overwhelmed by foreboding and fear, and let your brothers and sisters in Christ point you to Christ where your hope is. And most importantly, look around Look around at the unbelievers who are around you who don't know what's coming or don't care. Point them to Christ before it's too late for them. Point yourself and point everyone to Christ. Because Christ our Redeemer is coming. Advent is our special time of preparation. And let us then, as St. Paul says, give attention to the word of the Lord. That word of the Lord that does not pass away. As St. Paul writes, through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, be strengthened. Be strengthened in hope by the Holy Spirit as you diligently watch for Christ's coming. And then by God's grace we will escape. All of those terrible things, once and for all, those things that will come to pass, how will we escape? Because we sin. Stand with Christ and be ushered into his glory forever. In joy and not for voting, we can say to that. Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Having heard the word of God and read and expounded upon, we now confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 158. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, begotten of his Father before all the worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, 
being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven. serious burn on her left arm uh, and she is going through a lot of work to get that taken care of so we pray that the Lord would bring her healing quickly. Let us rise now as we lift our prayers and praises to God our Father. In peace let us pray to the Lord for the steadfastness of the word of Christ our incarnate judge that ever mindful of his coming we may live in harmony with one another and together glorify him. Let us pray to the Lord. For the congregation and ministers of the church, especially our synod president, our district president, our circuit counselor, and our pastors, John Jenkins and Carl Becker, that by them the Father would continually call sinners to repentance and comfort them with the healing of the Son of Righteousness. Let us pray to the Lord. For all missionaries, including the Lawson and Federwitz families, that they would be faithful in their sharing of the true gospel to the world, that those who are lost in the darkness of sin and false hope may come to the assurance of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For the Lord's gift of marriage, that he would preserve it against the ravages of sin, the schemes of the devil, and the raging of the world, and for the couples and families of our congregation, that God would strengthen them in love for one another and establish them on the foundation of his word, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For harmony, that God would defeat the plans of all who would stir up violence, destroy the weapons of all of those who delight in bloodshed, and according to his will, end all conflicts in our nation and in our world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the Holy Spirit, that by God's word he would search our hearts to root out all evil that would lead to strife and discord, so that we may be at peace with all people. And for zeal for the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which alone can bring peace beyond understanding, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. 
for all those in need, including Elaine, Laura, Wanda, Colleen, Pam, Willard, Cindy, Terry, Marcia, Damon, Frida, Robert, Darrell, our homebound Linda and Francis, and all those that we now lift up before you in our hearts. Bring them comfort, peace, hope, and restoration according to your will. And let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. And for all who commune this day, for repentance and firm trust in Christ, for right discernment of his holy body in the supper, and that God would fill us with joy and peace in believing, so that forgiven and abounding in hope, we may be able to stand with a clean conscience before his judgment throne. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue now with the service of the sacrament found beginning on page 160. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the, the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and to drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and His kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. For Lord Jesus Christ, in the name which He was betrayed to bread, and when He given thanks, He broke it gave it to his disciples and said, Take me, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into 
heaven and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And let us go forth now in the peace and joy of our Lord as we sing our final hymn for the morning.
Yeah.